Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. In this episode, we get to learn how to put on a lot of layers of clothing because it's like week five of spring in Wisconsin and that means it snowed last night. Today we're gonna learn about how we ship artwork using mail. If you notice, we have a box. This is a box for a painting. We use air float systems. It's the easiest to pack. And if you're at an art museum or an art gallery, it's the easiest to unpack. These are pricey, but when compared to the price of your artwork, shipping it across the country, who knows what happens to it from when you ship it to when they receive it, it's worth the investment. We get ours at airfloat.com. We found out that that's the cheapest price. We went to other places, they were cheaper, but then with shipping, not so much. So we actually got this Airfloat box at airfloat.com. I'll show you why this one's pretty cool. Here we go. When you look at the box, it's just a nice rectangle box. It has the fragile, do not lay flat, all that good stuff on it. There's only one way to open it up. It has a front with little flaps on it. When you open it up, you'll notice the cover has some puncture proof plastic on it. So if they lay it flat, which they're not supposed to, hopefully no spears, saw blades, or anything else will get stuck through the box into your painting. There's also protective foam of egg crate on it. And then, and then another egg crate and then more foam. So however you package your painting, it kind of does fit. It comes with instructions and that's helpful. But what we've seen a lot of artists do, that piece of foam, they usually cut it so it fits their painting. The painting is supported by the foam on the bottom, the foam on the top, and then since they cut that foam, it's foam on the sides too. So there's lots of foam, lots of plastic protection on the cover and also on the bottom. So each big cover has a protective puncture proof plastic, two layers of foam, and then the third layer of foam that goes around your painting. Well. All that's left is for me to actually install the painting. So I'm gonna do that probably off camera. We have our painting that we are going to be putting in the box but we have to protect the top of the painting, meaning the painting part of the painting, the painty part. We usually cover the painting with some non-stick type paper. And it's a very, very special paper. And that is Reynolds freezer paper. So that's what we use. They do make specialty papers just for this kind of thing. The freezer paper is really cheap. It works really well. It doesn't stick. It protects it from any foamy bits that may press against it. It's just a nice extra layer of protection. When you spend that long on a painting, use like 30 cents in freezer paper. It'll work. And all I do, I simply tape it to the bottom of the frame with some painter's tape. It comes off easy. It doesn't take the finish off my frame. And it's not overly sticky. And it's kind of a one to two time use. Ship it there, ship it back. Ta-da! The piece of foam that came with it that you usually cut to put around your painting I started filling in the sides. So you can see there's a piece of the foam I cut. And I cut it way bigger than I need it. So if this is, let's say an inch, I'll cut it two inches wide. You can see I cut it a lot wider than I need to because I wanna make sure the painting's in there nice and secure, it won't move anywhere. I'm probably gonna put two layers in there because I'm a big fan of overpacking. When you cut your foam, you don't need to measure because there are perforations in it. And they are about every single inch. Did I know that when I started? Absolutely not. I cut it crooked as crap the first time. But now you know. So I'm gonna finish cutting this out and filling in the gaps of this box. The painting is now all secured with the little foamy bits I cut. I do have some little gaps here and there, but it's like, is anything really gonna puncture through that, through that, through three quarter inch cherry into there, highly doubt it. If I really wanted to be anal, I could fill that in. I could put an extra layer of parchment or freezer paper on top, but when you're mailing out artwork, you don't wanna over engineer it because somebody at the museum or somebody at the gallery has to unbox this. The more bits and pieces you put in it, the longer it's gonna take them 
to take it apart. And they don't like that. Keep it simple for them. It's the end of the world as we know it. It's the end. Another big reason we get these nice art shippers is all they have to do is open it up and take out the painting. It takes them maybe 30 seconds. Their time is valuable. They want to hang up your artwork, not try to, you know, puzzle piece it out of your box. So now you know. Uh, this is the duh. That's a good way to start. This is the back of the painting. You can see that I have my minimal tape on there to hold my parchment paper. We also have a little ID tag on there because the gallery wants a tag on the back of the painting so they can quickly identify whose is whose in case y'all need it. Inside the box, probably on here, I have a spec sheet. Our spec sheets kind of look like this. It shows the painting, it tells who did it, all their information, how much it is, when it was completed, and a little bio of it. And we put that inside the box. And the reason we put that inside the box is we like our box. We want our box back. If the painting doesn't sell, or even if it does sell, we want the box shipped back. So we want to make sure we get our box back. So it's kind of hard to screw the box up if you have that spec sheet saying this is who it is and this is who it belongs to. So that's why we put that little spec sheet up in there. The next step we do in order to ship this out is to weigh it. And to weigh it, I have a very special device used to measure the weight of art products. And it is the health o -meter. This will tell me how much it weighs. 16 pounds. So when I buy shipping, I'll probably go like 18, 20 because they're gonna charge you for how big it is and how heavy. But the bigger it is, the more expensive it is. So if you had a big empty box that was this big, Chances are it's gonna cost the same amount full as it would empty. So even though it says about like 16 pounds or so, I'm probably gonna go like 18 to 20 just to play with the size. Sorry, to play with the weight. So I get a regular household scale and then I plump up the weight a little bit just to be safe. Hi everybody, I'm at my computer. I'm gonna show you how I use this orangemailer.com to ship stuff out. So let's do that. So I am at this website called orangemailer.co.com.net.org. www.sh.com.org. And I have the gallery's information in there. I have my information in here. You can go to your packaging. It has a lot of pre-made ones, but since I have a custom box, I put in the size of my box. It's actually five and a half wide, but I always plump it up a little bit. That's the size of the label I'm going to print out. This is the actual weight of the box. So let's go 16 pounds. So we did 16 pounds, show available rates, USPS priority, $60. If I plump it up to 20 pounds, let's refresh it, show available weight rates, weight. It's still $60. So let's say I just did one pound for fun. Let's see if it's more of a size thing than a weight thing. So if I just had a one pound and empty box, ah oh crap, wrong button. Yeah, it's still $60. So it doesn't matter if you ship an empty box or a full box with United States Postal Service, they're looking at the size. So that's why I always plump it up to a more pounds than I need. Show available rates. And that tells me how much, I can get it there in two days for $60 or a couple longer days for you know, a buck and a half less. So I do that. I have to add funds to it because you have to pay as y'all go. So then I would do that, print it off, slap it on, make sure I have a tracking number. And if for some reason they didn't do tracking numbers, I'd have to go with UPS or some other shipping place. So that's how I do postage. I like to do it online because going to stores is terrible. I don't like it. So now you know. There's one more thing I forgot to show you on this. We have a more options button here. So we can add insurance. We can get it certified. We can get a signature. I don't know what this is, but it's something. Yes, 1% of value. Yay, certified. I don't know if I want certified signature. Yeah, I would probably want a signature required. Sure, why not? And then I'm going to, everything's the same up here. It's $60.10. Let's see if that changed anything. It did, it added maybe a dollar to it. It's like, really, that's it? Easy, let's do that. What if we did certified? Yeah, 60, yeah, another dollar. It's like, what the frick, why not? So yes, we want insurance, we want certified, we want a signature, because it costed us maybe $2 more. Stupid not to do it. Now you know everything, yay!
should be like the earth when I come. Yay, Shepherds. Shepherds, worth, worth it. it. <laughs> worth it. Yes. Mm.